I mean, I think there's, there's a lot of research that shows that um, people are social creatures, right? Social. And um, there's a very strong desire to feel like you belong. Um, and that is both good and bad. I mean, um, part of the reason, part of the issue with like, or part of the reason why like fascism is so compelling is because it offers uh, an avenue for people to feel like they belong, right? Um, um, but uh, it also means that if you can if you can develop in positive ways, then then you realize that that sense of belonging is more like you know you want to feel like you are loved and you are heard and you have agency and um, that people care for you. But then the extension to that or the corollary to that is you need a, it's a two-way street. So you need to also develop your own empathy for others and care about others as well um, in order for it to work. Um, and I think some people forget that part, you know, they forget, they, they just want to be on the receiving end. They don't remember or they don't realize that um, mutual um, care is, is what's actually important and everything, right? Or for it to be sustainable at least. Um, so there's that, there's just that, um, you know, and that's probably like a, a evolutionary thing, you know, like we, we are social, we're, we're pack animals. We're not, we're not um, solitary hunters and stuff like that, right? Um, but it's also sort of our necessity, right? Because we have a lot of people <laughs> in the world um, and uh, um, an unfair distribution of resources. And so we're going to have to figure out how to, uh, if, if you believe in fairness, then you have to figure out some way of um, sort of ensuring that fairness and that, and that uh, to me is, is about community development and everything and, and getting people, um, getting a culture of, um, you know, mutual, I guess, respect and benefit and everything and, and equitable um, access to resources and stuff like that. Because um, otherwise it's just vanity, right? Like, like um, to feel like you, you deserve something more than somebody else is just, is um, selfish and, and vain, vain and all that stuff. It isn't, it isn't a realization. Like, I don't think you, you haven't reached a higher realization of what it means to be human or what it means to be part of a part of something. Right. Um, the letters that I sent and everything are, are, you know, some of it is about that type of stuff. How do you, how do you, like, I try to remember, remind people, okay, there are people out there who care about you, but the covers thing that I'm trying to do is to get them to care about others <laughs> and not just realize that, that, that people care about them, but also get them to also like, care about others. Um, I don't think I've ever said that explicitly in any of my letters, but um, other than, other than just saying, Hey, check up on each other and stuff like that. Right. Um, and, and I, and the way I I've been framing it is like, it's easy to forget that people care about you. Mm. And so you should remember that. Um, and sometimes it's easy to forget because people are pretty bad at letting others know that you care about them, that, that yeah. they, they care about each other, right? And so I've been sort of using that as a hint, you know, like there's a hint there that you should reach out to your friend and let them know that you care about them, right? Um, I think kind of related to that, I one thing that I've, I've realized, I've actually kind of told it um, for the past several semesters is when I, I tell a story about um, a day that I was like very, very depressed um, in junior high. And there were, there were a lot of different reasons why I was feeling depressed. And a big part of that, I think, was because I grew up in an area where there was a lot of homophobia and I grew up with uh, two moms, one who's, who's bisexual, one who's lesbian. Um, and that, that really like 
kept us outside of a lot of different communities. So a lot of community events happened through um, the church where we were kind of not not welcome in a lot of places, a lot of churches. So, you know, it was basically isolated from that community. And as well as just like, you know, if I knew that people were homophobic, I was like, I can't <laughs> without, especially with um, how much my identity is tied to my my family and how if you're not going to respect and see my, my parents you know as as equal and as worthy of respect then I have no interest in being your friend so it's like you know that that affected me from since I was you know very young kid and everything um and I I think that it was something that I grappled with for a long time and still am grappling with which is kind of like um that that kind of feeling of being that I don't belong it hurts you know it's and it's really hard for it not psychologically to like kind of become part of your identity of like oh if people are excluding me it must be because to kind of like internalize it like it's because of me or something um so it's I'm I'm becoming more and more aware of I guess or getting more perspective on that um because when you're a kid especially you're so <laughs> you're so in it and you don't have the awareness or the validation of other people who've gone through something similar um but in any case the the story that I usually tell was on a day where I was very, feeling very very um extremely depressed extremely isolated extremely alone I was sitting alone in um gym class and one of the the kind of helpers to the gym instructor noticed that I was sad um and came over and said something to the effect of like hey how you doing kiddo and it was like the it was like term of term of endearment as well as just being noticed noticed that I was feeling alone noticed that I wasn't sitting with anyone that I was typically like kind of isolated like that um with the expression of both curiosity and kindness that like it just <laughs> that's one of those things when I said earlier that I want to send a, send a letter and I probably will um if I can locate them <laughs> that you know how much that meant to me and and I so I I think that partly whenever you can tell your own story about what it means to feel connected and also how much it hurts, or like you can share your experience of how much it hurts not to feel like you're connected to a bigger community. Like um, that to me, it's kind of like, I've lived and learned how much you need to feel a part of something bigger. Um, and and so I think like, I, I've, I hope, I hope that sharing that story calls up students empathy and also makes a space for them to share something similar um you know and and of course I also try to share other people's stories like creative nonfiction stories of um of similar things where it's like I think it, it becomes very evident when you when you look at people who have been kind of more isolated and, and I have more I had more privilege than than other, you know, people who have been more isolated or, I mean, experienced much higher degrees of isolation than I have, right? Um, but it's a, it's a starting point and it's something that they can, they can have a dialogue with me about if they want to. Um, so that's, I guess that's, yeah, that's one of the <laughs> ways that I use to encourage people to do that. But I've also been influenced um, in my research. I, I, I've, I'm in rhetoric and writing, and I was in a program that had a strong emphasis in something called cultural rhetorics. And I was also exposed to a lot of um, literature and scholarship um, from indigenous scholars and perspectives that talk about relationality and, you know, indigenous knowledges have for, you know, thousands of years have said how we're interconnected and, you know, 
our happiness is interwoven with other people's happiness. So I think I think it's important to acknowledge that as well as as well as learn from. Um, so yeah.